Well, it's too hot outside for us to do anything unless we get first in the pond. But now that we're all wet, we're ready to go out and do a really fun project. I noticed he's starting to have a little beard. At first I thought it was like a little, he's also got this little tuft up here. Yeah. <laughs> at first I thought his beard was like a little lump. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, look at that. What he's got. Look at, you're Winston so cute. Has Winston has nothing yet. All right, so first step, we gotta move these boys over into that pen while we clean up. So we're gonna do something a little extreme, but hopefully it'll fix a problem we've been having with our goats. We're gonna get this whole goat area cleaned up and ready to house Penny, Willow, and Winnie. So we can put them on a special diet and fix their leg problems. Looks like we got a little audience here. You guys wanna come in here with us? There's snake. Like a snake in my boot. We should get it. We don't want to like zip kill him up. Yeah, that's get him, true. Ethan. Oh, no. Ethan. He's gone now. He'll, gonna... he'll go away when the lawnmower starts. He's gonna get mowed up. Years ago, we bought Penny as an older goat, and when she started to limp and show hyperextended knees, at first we thought it was an injury, but then we noticed it started to show up a little bit in Willow, her daughter, and we feared it might be something genetic. I've had a lot of advice from different goat owners and they've all agreed that what helps solve a lot of leg issues is to reduce the amount of calcium in their diets. Typically we feed our goats alfalfa, we've always done that because we thought that that was best for them, but it tends to be really high in calcium. And while you think that would be great for a milking animal, for some goats it blocks the absorption of zinc and creates problems. So instead of feeding alfalfa, we're going to feed them a mix of orchard grass, Timothy hay, teff hay, and we're also gonna give them a mineral mix that has less calcium in it. So the plan is to keep Penny, Willow, and Winnie all here in this goat area for the next few months. And we're gonna be really good about measuring this. I've already got a baseline of where their legs are at, and we're hoping that this will help their legs straighten out over time. Winston will also be on this diet. He'll just be in with Zorro. Now, most people would just remove a line of goats that has this problem, and we've had people email us and tell us to just cut her out of the herd, but we don't wanna do that because one, we love Willow, and two, we really think that she has a lot of potential. So we're gonna keep a close watch, and this is gonna help us determine, is this something completely genetic that we have no control over, or is this something that we can improve with diet and mineral changes? We need to determine if we can keep breeding Willow and have her produce babies, or if it will be wiser to retire her so we don't continue that line. Willow's legs aren't that bad at all, and her babies aren't showing any sign of it yet. Their legs look perfect. So it could very well be that it's already been bred out of the line, but that's why we're keeping Winnie and Winston and gonna raise them up and hopefully see if they have great strong stocky legs. If they do, it'll be amazing and we can continue that line. If not, we're gonna have to make some tough decisions. Our animals provide so much for us in terms of milk. Milk is a huge food source for us on our little farm. So as much of a pain as it is to take care of animals in this way, I'm always willing to do it because I would rather that they be healthy and happy and be well taken care of. Now we're done. All right. Oh, naughty go <laughs> Whatever Tatum does, Winnie follows. All right, Penny first. The grandma of the whole bunch. All right, Willow's next. Yum, yum, yum. All this food to yourself. And now we gotta find Winnie, wherever she is. All right. All right. Winnie's the last one. <laughs> Yay! You can be with mom and grandma. <laughs> Fun little family reunion, wherever right. Penny is. Penny's over there. Noshing on a little Winnie bit of grass. Looks like a mix of Willow and Penny. Let's come in she and does. Stay a bit. Okay, back up, Winnie. No, sorry, Tilly. <laughs> you got to go eat with everybody else over there. You're not a grandma. Same a with mom. you, Stella. <laughs> and same with you, Tatum. You're not part of this family. No, sorry. This is the leg family. <laughs> this is the messed up leg family. And now that we're done with all that, we can swim.
shake it? Yep. Okay. Shake it, like fast little shakes. Do it, a little bit more, a little bit more. Nice. Now that the pollen has arrived for our corn experiment, guys, we are going to hand pollinate. And we do this because we don't really get a ton of wind right here in Arizona. So we're gonna go through, shake everything, and make sure that the pollen falls down so that everything is equally pollinated and we don't get sparse corn. We'll get nice, big, full ears of corn. Well, so far our experiment of growing the corn in the grass has worked. It's kept it up really strong and the water systems worked really well. It's, it's a good experiment. And we were able to get rid of the motion sprinkler because they are way too big for the cats to get now. I don't think they can take it down. They just like playing in it. So far, our corn experiment is working. Well guys, I think I killed my potatoes. I think I overwatered them because they're soggy as heck and there ain't no good potatoes inside of them. Careful. No, see how like rotten smelling it is? There's a couple, but they're all rotten. I cannot figure it out because I've grown potatoes before and I assumed that if I grew them in the bags I would need to water more because they would dry out more in Arizona but I think I was wrong because they were too watered and too soggy the so. The bags must keep in that moisture really good. Let's pull this one. Look at that measly little nothings. But on a good note, these volunteer potatoes popped up from a couple years ago when I planted potatoes here. And <laughs> so we're gonna see if these guys actually do better because they're in the ground. So, I don't know. It's so tricky to grow things in Arizona because the timing has to be perfect and the watering has to be perfect. Every area has their own challenges and one day though guys, one day I will grow a bunch of good potatoes. And the good thing is that because we can grow year round here, I'm gonna try again in September. See, you just can't get upset about failures because failures happen to everybody. Right, Kevin? Yes. And to me, even more. <laughs> I am gonna save these potato bags though because they held up really well and I like the idea of expanding the space in the garden. Yeah, and so, moving them. Yeah, moving them and everything. I just think I didn't quite get the watering right on it. Despite some failures in the garden, there are a lot of things that are doing really well and today we're gonna harvest a bunch of tomatoes and can them. If the world had more of your smile, what if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. After they're all washed, all I do is score the tops with a little X. Maybe the trees will whisper the while sterilizing my jars and lids and then I'm gonna boil them for just about a minute until the peels start to crack I'll put them in a cool water bath and then start a peel in it's probably the most tedious part of this job And we can't forget about Hermione. She always gets any scraps that are left over. After the jars are filled and wiped clean, we're going to process them, which means we boil them for about an hour and a half to get these beautiful jars of summer tomatoes. <laughs> Kevin! Right. I think the little chicks are hungry. I don't know. <laughs> I think so. 
Hermione's not gonna share at all. Don't bug Hermione, she'll bite you. Well guys, it looks like the chicks know exactly who to go to for their food. Everybody waits over here like it's their turn, but the only one that's being milked is Tilly right here. Luna just wants a scratch. Stella just wants more food, but all you get is a scratch. And Fern is like the sweetest little goat we've ever had. You're so sweet, did you know that? <laughs> You're so sweet. Oh my goodness. So yep, we let Fern out of the buck pen. She's officially bred, and now we just have probably three weeks before we can get her ultrasounded to see if she truly is pregnant and how many she has. Stella is gonna go into heat in just about a week. So we're gonna put her in in a couple days and hopefully she does okay in there. Oh, Doris, you act so tough, but you're the sweetest one. You're so patient, Tilly. It's hey. your turn. Go, it's your turn. Keep down, Doris. <laughs> All right, bye, Doris. Be nice today, okay? Don't bully anybody. And Tilly, well, you're a little goofy, but you're sweet, too. Every time we come out here in the morning, the baby goats hear us and they're so loud. Good morning. <laughs> I know, this is us. <laughs> oh, Winnie, you're so loud. Okay, we'll let you guys out in a little bit. We gotta milk your mamas first. All right, Willow, time to get out. Look at that udder, it's huge. Willow has a huge udder for a first timer. Look how much it goes down after we milk. Well, I haven't heard back on the milk testing yet, so we're still waiting to see how they each performed, and I will let you know when we find out. That's the one, right? <laughs> there that's it that's the rooster guys it does look like a rooster yep dang it of course the pretty ones have to be roosters <laughs> all right oh <laughs> tatum can't make it well we decided to go ahead and leave tatum in here because winnie needs a friend and they love to play together. So Tatum will be fine in here eating the same diet. The best part about this area is it has a built-in protective cage for nighttime. All right, you can come out now. Good morning. Hey guys. You know what Zorro this can't figure it out. There you go. There's a little bit of grass pellets for them. There you go. They want grain. <laughs> they want treats. Hey. Well, looks like Mango wants to lay more eggs because she got kicked out of her tire. Mango, none of them are fertile. It's, it's too hot. It's too hot to do eggs right now. We better take her off and take away the eggs so she stops. I'll let you wear that. You will? Yeah, because I'm not going to be doing that. What do you think? I'm mostly confused. Why did you tie a wire brush and whatever goat brush to a belt? Well, haven't you seen Luna really coming up to us, rubbing her head on us, and they just love to be scratched. I don't think a wire brush is going to be very good for this. Coats, come on! <laughs> Well, we might have to do, oh, there's some, oh. oh. Yeah, they just got food, so they're very uh, focused on this right now. All right, eventually we'll work when she's not hungry. You got both. You have to turn her to the side if you're <laughs> <laughs> It works. 
<laughs> Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you want to watch the video, which is one of our favorites, of Willow as a little adorable baby who didn't know how to climb a ramp, click here.